Hey guys, it's Chris Ord from St. Hedwig. Welcome to my new home. Me and my family just moved on Saturday, so we're shooting outside because it's crazy inside. <laughs> There's a lot of boxes. So either way, this is your last class. Oh, that's so sad, right? But don't worry, don't worry. There's gonna be all sorts of different things going on on our YouTube. So there'll still be uh, videos with fun games, different activities for you to watch. It just won't be in place of your class because this week would have been the last week of class if we were still going to class. But let's get started. So first, we're gonna play a game. The game we're gonna play today is called Steal the Remote. All right, so for this game, what you're gonna do is you need at least three people. So hopefully you have at least three people in the room. If you don't, then it could just be a slight different version of this game. But regardless, you should be playing this with your whole family, all right? So how this game works is most of you are gonna be sitting on the couch, but one of you is going to find one of the remotes and make sure everybody knows which remote it is. And that person is gonna hide the remote around the living room. Now when I say hide, it has to still be visible. It can't be under anything or behind anything. It just has to be sitting out, all right? But try and hide it somewhere around the room. The people on the couch will have their eyes closed during this point, right? And then the person who hit it will go back to the center of the living room, and then they'll say, one, two, three, go! And then everyone sitting on the couch will open their eyes and try and find the remote. First one to find the remote gets a point. Got it? You can play as many rounds as you like, but play at least three or five rounds, and then you can find out who is the best remote finder. And then once you've found that person, you can make it their job to always find the remote. Because I tell you, in my house, we lose our remotes all the time, right? So what you're gonna do now is you're gonna pause the video and play the game. Ready? One, two, three, find the remote! All right, so who was the best remote finder? Huh? Was it you? Okay, well I hope you take this responsibility very seriously of being able to find the remote quickly because that's your job in the family now. Every time remote's lost, we know where to turn. Okay, cool. So what we're going to do next is we are going to talk about the upcoming gospel for next Sunday or this upcoming Sunday. All right, ready, set, let's go! All right, so in the gospel reading this upcoming Sunday, Jesus really paints a picture for us. He says, hey, you know, whoever enters the sheepfold through the gate, and just bear with me, let's pretend like this is like the pen that you would keep sheep in, or the sheepfold like Jesus talked about it. And let's pretend that these boxes on the inside are the sheep. See? See the cute little sheep? Oh, that's a cute little sheep. Yeah. So Jesus, like I said, says, Anyone who enters the sheepfold through the gate, those people are the shepherds. The ones that are coming through the gate that it's meant to. They're using it like it's supposed to, and they're here for the sheep, right? But anyone who doesn't, anyone who comes another way, like someone who hops the fence, or someone who sneaks through a hole in the back, right? Jesus says those people, they're not the shepherds, they're the robbers. And that makes sense, right? And he says that the sheep, they recognize the voice of the shepherds because the shepherd is the one that's been with them the whole time, right? And when the shepherd calls them and he calls them out through the gate and follows them and goes with them, they will follow. But it says when the robbers come, they're gonna run from them, right? Now the people listening to this story were a little confused. So Jesus kind of breaks it down. And he says, I, Jesus, I'm the gate, right? This gate here. And all the people in the world, they're the sheep. And the robbers are the people that come in and try and take things from the sheep try to lead the sheep astray and make them live lives that they were never meant to. Sometimes when we're at church and we're learning about all the different things we learn about throughout the year, it can seem like we're learning a lot of rules and we're kind of being caged in and we're being trapped into only one way to live our life, right? It kind of looks like this, like what Jesus 
was describing. We feel like we're sheep that are trapped. That can kind of sometimes be the hard part about learning about our faith, right? But at the very end of this gospel, which you'll hear in the upcoming Sunday, Jesus says this. He says the robbers and the thieves that come in, they don't really care about the sheep. And they're not trying to give the sheep good lives or anything. They're there to steal the sheep. Right? They're there to kind of ruin the lives and to make money for themselves. That's why they came to steal the sheep. But he says, me, I'm not really there to steal the sheep. He said he was the gate, right? He's there to throw open the doors and to lead us out. He's there to take us from this pen, this sheepfold, where we're waiting. And this is the world that we're living in now. And to take us to a better one. He said he wants to take us out into an open pasture where we have room, where we have a life that we were meant to live. Sometimes it can feel like we're trapped by our faith, penned in. But what's really happening is Jesus is trying to show us the life we were always meant to live. He's trying to open up those gates and lead us out into the real world, into heaven, and into the place that we were made for and meant for. That's a pretty cool thing. It's actually freedom. All right, guys, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do a little sharing time. And remember, this sharing time is kind of the most important part of the class. This is the part where we take what's inside and we share it with everybody else around us. You know, we could feel really isolated these days now that we're all kind of stuck in place. We don't get to go and do the things we are used to doing. But if we're able to share how we're feeling inside with those around us, that's one of the best ways to make sure um, that we feel connected to the people that we're living with, right? So um, I'm going to have two questions for the sharing, okay? So for the first question, I'm just asking, what is a distraction or a robber in your life? What's something in your life that's trying to take your attention away from all the things that God wants you to be focused on? All right, that's the first question. The second question is, describe the perfect life that God is talking about. When he talks about that open pasture, about opening the gates and being led to the place where you're supposed to be, what do you think that life looks like? Right? So the first one, what is a distraction? And two, what do you think your life following Jesus, living the life he wants, what do you think, uh, describe what that might look like? All right? Sound good? Those are the two questions. Go ahead and share now. All right. Well, thank you so much for sharing. So what we're going to do for our closing prayer is what I want you to do is take some time and draw uh, an image or create an image somehow. If you don't like drawing, you could, uh, you could do a collage, or you could just write a lot if you want, of that life that God has in store for you, right? The life of you living with him, following the good shepherd, going through that gate and in the beautiful pasture that God has intended for you. Just take some time and imagine that, right? We all know that there's a life out there that God wants us to be living, but if we're not going to stop and even think about what it might be, It'll be harder for us to want to even follow him, right? So let's take the time to create that image. And once you do, um, put it up somewhere. Put it up somewhere you can see as a reminder that, hey, God has this big, great plan for you and that you're going to be okay. All right? So um, that could take a little while, so we're not going to pause the video. We'll just have you work on that closing prayer um, as soon as this video is over. Like I said, this uh, is your last class for the year. We don't know exactly what the classes will look like next year. I can assure you that whatever we do at St. Hedwig, it's going to be um, whatever the experts tell us is the best thing to do. But uh, we don't know what it looks like. But I know that there will be class regardless, and I know that uh, it'll be all a part of God's plan no matter what. All right? So with that, I just ask that you keep my family in your prayers, know that all of your families are in mind and just continue praying for the church as a whole and really for the whole world in this crazy time that we're living in right now. Peace be with you and let's have a great week guys. See you later. Oh one last thing I know 
that uh, for a lot of people, a big part of their worship is being able to give back to the church. Um, and now that we're not able to go to church in the building anymore, that can get a lot harder and easier to forget. So I put in the description down below a link that'll take you to the online giving portal. It's just the, it's the perfect way to continue giving the same way that you always have. And if you can, please do. It, it'll help uh, certainly with our ministry to continue doing all these things that we plan on doing. And it'll just help make sure that this church is all here when we finally get to come back. All right. Thanks, guys. God bless.